Welcome back, my friends. It's Maura Marisol covering this week's Parsha. But first, let's see where we are on the Omer count. Do you have your calendar ready? Here it is. We are on day 43. So let's see how many weeks we have passed. One, two, three, four, five, and six weeks in one day. And do you notice something about this pattern? It looks like it's going up the mountain, right? It is. It's supposed to look like a mountain and going up to receive the Torah. Now, today's Parsha is called Bamidbar. It's the first, it's the first, uh, it's a new book, actually, book of numbers. And it means in the desert. Do you have your Hebrew letters ready? Okay, go get them because we are going to spell the Parsha. Parsha thing today. We have a bet, a mem, a dalen, and we have to borrow this bet again, and a rish. And that spells Bamid Bar. We'll pretend that the bet is here since I only have one bet. Bamid Bar. Well, for this week's Parsha, God tells Moshe to get a cent to make a census. And census means is that he's gathering the numbers or the number of males for each tribe. Now, what he does with that information, once Moshe gets all of the information, he gathers it and reports it to God by tribe. In a moment, after we place all of the tribes around the tabernacle, we're gonna see which tribes are the biggest and which are the smallest. The second thing, the second um, command um, given to Moshe was to tell the Israelites that they needed to camp around the tabernacle, but they needed to do it in a very specific order. First, we're going to start with the first camp, which is Issachar. So the tribe of Issachar is right here. Then we have Judah. Zebulun. And that's the first camp. The second camp we have Simeon. Reuben and Gad. Now we're going to start the third camp. The third camp is Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh. Now the last camp. It starts with Asher, Dan, and Naphtali. So they were instructed to camp all the way around the tabernacle and they had to stay within their own tribe. So as you can see, here are the 12 tribes. Now these if you notice, they are the same color. Can you guess why that is? That's because their dad is Joseph. Joseph was Israel's son. These are Joseph's, uh, are Israel's grandchildren, but they became a tribe. Now, take a look at all of these colors and all of the tribes. Do you notice something about their color? They're not all the same color except for these two, right? These colors represent, or they closely represent, the stones that are on the Kohen Gadol's breastplate. Every tribe had their own individual color, along with the name of the tribe was written on the stone. So they could be, so it could distinguish each stone. And that's why we have all of these colors. Also, now look at the sizes of each of these blocks or boxes. 
Do they look the same to you? They shouldn't because they're not. If you see, Judah is the biggest square. And the reason is because the tribe of Judah is the largest. Now let's take a look. Which one would you say is the smallest? Hmm. I have to say Manasseh. Manasseh is the smallest tribe. So you see, each of these blocks, or the size of the blocks, represent the number of people, how big of a tribe it was. So you see, all the tribes weren't the same size. And so that's why God needed Moshe to gather this information so he had an idea of how big each of the tribes were. And based on their size, then he placed them accordingly around the tabernacle. Now, if you're wondering, we have a group of people that we're missing, right? Yes, we're missing the priests. Now, if you remember, the priest's job is the tabernacle. So where should they be placed? Around the tabernacle, of course, but they're the closest. We are going to start with Moshe and the Cohen. See how little they are? That's because there weren't that many. <laughs> right here. We're going to move Judah over here a little bit and place Mo Moses and the Cohen right there. That's where they were supposed to be at the entrance. Next, we have Kohath and his clan. Then we have Gershon and his clan. And last, we have Merari and his clan. Now, if you see, look at all of those four squares or rectangles. Do they look the same? Are they the same size? They're not, are they? That's because their clans had, diff had different numbers as well. Kohath was the largest clan of Levites, followed by Gershon and Merari. And of course, Moshe and the Cohen were very few, right? We only have Moshe, Aaron, and his two sons. So there's the smallest group. Now, a few partials ago, I reviewed with you what each, what each of the Levites' responsibilities were. Remember, I talked about the tiers. First, the Cohen Gadol, Aaron, then his sons, the Cohen, and then the Levites, right? Well, here's what they were supposed to do. Kohath, his job or his clan's job was to take all the coverings and all the curtains from the tabernacle. That was that family's job. Gershon's job was to get all of the all of the furniture within the tabernacle. So we have the the menorah, we have the incense, we have the holy of holies, we have the showbread. Marari. Morari's job was to take all of the outside structure, the thing, the the actual, the main structure in order for the tabernacle um, to be set in place, basically the outline. So he would get, or that family would be responsible for all of the planks, um, all of the sockets where the curtains would be, were, would hang, all the poles, that was Morari's job. Now, of course, we know that the Cohen, Cohen's job was to guide the people to do the sacrifices and to go inside the tabernacle and take care of all of these things, keeping the can the lights on, the candles burning, the incense burning, and to change the showbread every week. Well, that's all, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Shabbat shalom. Until next week. Bye.